Right, thanks everybody for coming. And uh, uh, we're sort of doing a bit uh, more sort of CBD sort of uh, above on the one that we did uh, two weeks ago. Uh, but we're doing sort of a bit more classic sort of one sort of today. And uh, I thought this is something that I did in my last sort of uh, place of as well. And uh, we're looking at some new things, or at least a, a few things that uh, um, I'm really sort of interested in sort of keen about and also some new sort of stuff that is sort of coming out and is going to come out uh, in, uh, in the near sort of future in uh, <coughs> medical oncology. Uh, so we're going to sort of to talk about sort of metronomic sort of chemotherapy. Uh, everybody sort of happy with metronomic chemotherapy? Everybody, somebody using it? Who's using metronomic chemotherapy? Okay, not many then. It's good. So hopefully sort of after tonight, uh, there'll be a lot more people sort of using it. Uh, we're talking about uh, a newish drug uh, come out on the market uh, called Tanovia and uh, licensed for uh, canine lymphoma. <coughs> Anybody's used it? Okay. It's actually not more, any more available. It's coming from the States. Uh, but uh, for some reason, uh, uh, it's, uh, they, the company is, was so, sold to uh, Elanco. So Elanco is now distributing it. And uh, um, they can't do it anymore now. So it doesn't come out of the States anymore now for some reason. And then we're going to talk about uh, immunotherapy, which is uh, a big sort of uh, topic, especially in the uh, human market, obviously human oncology, but also in veterinary sort of oncology sort of as well. So we go sort of uh, metronomic sort of chemotherapy sort of first. Uh, and uh, this is a good sort of uh, analogy sort of, uh, this is sort of Latin sort of, uh, gutta sort of cover lapidem. Uh, if, uh, let's see who's the quickest uh, to look it up and sort of see and tell me what that means. Uh, that'd be sort of, uh, that'd be good. Uh, it's a good sort of analogy with metronomic chemotherapy, and uh, as soon as we got a translation, sort of, uh, then uh, we'll sort of uh, you'll see why. Sort of, uh, well, anybody sort of uh, knows Latin? Yeah, yeah, good one. Yes. So obviously, yes. Too late. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, sort of. Uh, it's the good is sort of the raindrop or the water drop. Uh, Cava sort of calves. Lapidem is stone. So the idea is obviously sort of the little sort of drop, the humble little sort of drop, obviously drop after drop after drop, obviously makes a hole in a, in a stone. And that's what uh, we'll see metronomic chemotherapy is, is, uh, is about. So we'll talk quickly sort of obviously conventional cell chemotherapy and then the concept of metronomic chemotherapy, what it is, the differences with uh, conventional cell chemo and how, sort of, uh, how it works uh, or how it should sort of work. Conventional sort of chemo, everybody's presumably happy with this. Uh, it does utilize this sort of uh, MTD, so a maximum to already sort of dose of a drug. And uh, because of that, you need to, obviously you can't use it uh, every day or very often. You need to uh, give it a bit of time for the body to recover. And uh, usually you administer it every sort of two, three, sort of four weeks. Uh, if you do it obviously too often, you're gonna have sort of uh, two severe sort of side effects uh, and uh, you can't sort of do it. Uh, so you've got sort of uh, obligatory rest periods in between, uh, which uh, is obviously good for the body, but it's bad for the tumor because uh, you're obviously allowing that tumor to recover sort of as well at the same time. And uh, what that sort of does, uh, you're going to have uh, an illicit uh, tumor drug resistance because obviously that sort of drug is only in for a certain period of time and then it obviously wears off uh, and the tumor has got time to build some resistance to it. We go back a little bit uh, how things sort of started and sort of uh, uh, how it sort of worked. And we go back to the 70s, uh, this sort of uh, American sort of scientist, uh, Folkman. And uh, he was uh, the first one that sort of uh, <coughs> recognized uh, the importance of tumor sort of uh, angiogenesis or neoangiogenesis uh, as a key sort of driver, both for cancer sort of growth, uh, but also as a target for uh, chemotherapy. So we know that sort of uh, tumors, uh, both of your primary sort of tumor, unfortunately this light, doesn't work on these sort of screens. Uh, but obviously, the new angiogenesis uh, is important, is essential, uh, both for your primary sort of tumor on the left, uh, but also for your metastatic sort of tumors uh, on the, on the right-hand side. And uh, out of this, uh, we've got uh, in the sort of uh, year sort of 2000, 2000 is a key year for um, human sort of oncology. Lots of things sort of started in year sort of 2000. Uh, and uh, these sort of two, Again, sort of American sort of scientists, sort of Hannah and uh, Weinberg, uh, 
uh, produced the first of these sort of papers that are called sort of hallmarks of cancer. And uh, this one, uh, you can see, I don't know if you can read, obviously from the back, it's a bit sort of small, but uh, this one uh, uh, is actually sort of uh, from 2011 because they did like uh, any good sort of film where you do sort of uh, your first sort of film and then you do like number two or the revenge or something like that. And this is obviously the revenge sort of because this is the next sort of generation like sort of Star Trek, that sort of stuff. And, uh, and they obviously, um, you can sort of see, sort of these are sort of the hallmarks of sort of cancers. So this is what any tumor cell, successful tumor cell has got to have in order to be able to be a successful sort of tumor cell. And you can sort of see in red, you've got sort of angiogenesis. And that's obviously one of the main sort of point that going back sort of from the 70s, obviously was recognized a lot more sort of a few years sort of later. And when they produce this new sort of paper sort of here, they've actually sort of introduced four new hallmarks. Because obviously things have evolved over like 10 years. So now we've got sort of all together sort of 10 of these sort of hallmarks of sort of cancer. But yeah, 2000 is the, the year, because this is the year where also this other sort of uh, group, Browder and, sort of and, 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 and Al, um, in, introduced the concept of anti-angiogenic sort of chemotherapy. And uh, they've got this sort of uh, very sort of simple sort of study. They've got uh, a, obviously groups of sort of mice, and uh, they've uh, uh, injected them with uh, a specific um, tumor and uh, um, which is a lung sort of carcinoma and then they've given them uh, cyclophosphamide. They did it uh, in two ways, either sort of as an MTD, so maximum tolerated sort of dose every three weeks and then obviously they followed them up and measured sort of these sort of tumors, uh, how they sort of developed. They also did sort of a second group, they did it at a lower dose, about sort of a third of the MTD but done sort of uh, once a week. And uh, that's what uh, your sort of graph sort of down here sort of says. You can sort of see you've got your conventional sort of chemo done sort of every sort of uh, three weeks sort of here. And uh, uh, this is uh, your metronomic sort of chemo done once a week. And what you can sort of see, this is obviously your control sort of group, so it didn't have any sort of chemo. Obviously, the tumor gets sort of big sort of straight away. This is your uh, conventional sort of uh, chemo, and you can sort of see uh, obviously stays sort of smaller for a few sort of weeks and then eventually just sort of uh, escapes uh, your uh, chemotherapy. Whereas uh, your group uh, with your metronomic, uh, that sort of tumor sort of uh, never really sort of uh, gets any sort of bigger than uh, the original sort of tumor. And so this is the first sort of paper where they introduced the concept of uh, anti-angiogenic sort of uh, uh, chemotherapy. Same year, 2000, um, Hanan, which is the same that produced the whole market sort of cancers with the colleagues, uh, they sort of uh, coined sort of the term metronomic sort of chemotherapy because before it was like sort of uh, anti-angiogenic. Uh, they sort of coined sort of the metronomic sort of chemotherapy sort of term, which meant uh, a chronic administration, so uh, a very sort of frequent one with low dosages. Therefore, you've got uh, a minimum toxicity, frequent sort of schedule, and no prolonged sort of breaks. So instead of uh, doing obviously big, uh, if you want uh, bullets, like so it is uh, at the top sort of here with your conventional, you've got smaller and more sort of frequent sort of bullets. Uh, and then obviously down here you've got, uh, you can combine it with other sort of drugs sort of as well to have a, a better sort of effect sort of as well. So differences, uh, we said uh, conventional sort of chemo, you're using uh, maximum tolerated sort of dose. Uh, you need to have uh, rest periods in between uh, your dosages. This will obviously cause a rise and fall of plasma sort of concentration of these sort of drugs. <coughs> the main sort of target uh, for your MTD is your tumor cells, your proliferating sort of tumor sort of cells. Uh, and obviously with that sort of uh, goes through toxicity sort of problems. Uh, on the other hand, with metronomic, you're using a lower dose than your MTD, something which is called an OBD, which is optimal biological sort of dose. The dose frequency is continuous, usually daily or every other day. That results in a sustained plasma sort of concentration, so it doesn't sort of go up and down. The target is different. The target, uh, it's not so much your tumor sort of cells, uh, 
but rather you sort of endothelial sort of cells uh, of your tumor vasculature. Because you're using sort of uh, far smaller dosages, toxicity is not really sort of an issue. We can use sort of uh, in preference oral drugs as opposed to injectable sort of drugs uh, for your MTD. It's practical for prolonged sort of use uh, because especially if we're talking uh, uh, humans, uh, uh, people do it at home. You don't, they don't need to go back and forth uh, uh, to the hospital. Uh, it's a lot more sort of cost effective. Uh, some of the drugs uh, that you use for your MTD are much, much more expensive. Um, and this is also true a lot uh, in uh, countries uh, like developing sort of country or less developed sort of countries where cost is obviously a big sort of issue. And uh, you can combine it with uh, other sort of strategies and therapies like sort of immunotherapy, for example. How does it work? Uh, this is what uh, a tumor sort of does, uh, something called an angiogenic sort of switch. Can you see at the back? Oh, no. hmm? uh, any sort of uh, tumor sort of mass, because it's uh, rapidly dividing and expanding, uh, is hypoxic. And that's what uh, that sort of cartoon is up there, sort of. Uh, the hypoxia of uh, the tumor sort of cells induces this sort of uh, HIF1, which is hypoxia inducible factor one. And that sort of, uh, by sort of, uh, it on its own sort of, uh, then stimulates uh, lots of other sort of factors, like sort of uh, vascular endothelial growth sort of factor, platelet sort of derived sort of growth factor, tumor necrosis after sort of uh, fibroblaster and uh, angios angios um, poietin sort of one. So all of these in black are all sort of uh, pro-angiogenic sort of factors. So all these factors uh, will stimulate new blood vessels from, uh, uh, from forming. The two in red, thrombospondin one and endostatin, are actually anti-angiogenic sort of factors, uh, which are actually suppressed. So your tumors, uh, has got uh, lots of pro-angiogenic factors uh, and suppresses your anti-angiogenic sort of factors. Uh, and the way they produce nubular vessels uh, in that sort of cartoon on the bottom right, uh, they can do it in different sort of ways. Uh, they can sort of, uh, you've got sort of endothelial sort of cells uh, which make up nubular vessels. Uh, you can actually have uh, tumor cells uh, that sort of uh, make blood vessels themselves. Uh, or you can have sort of uh, a mixture sort of, uh, of both uh, of, uh, to make sort of new sort of blood vessels. Uh, How does it work metronomic? We said uh, um, first and foremost uh, inhibits uh, vasculogenesis and angiogenesis. Uh, um, how does it do that? Because it kills uh, or inhibits uh, your endothelial sort of cells for proliferation. Uh, the good thing of uh, targeting endothelial sort of cells and not tumor cells, uh, it's uh, very sort of uh, um, good because uh, your tumor cells are very sort of unstable and they can become resistant very quickly to any drug that you throw at them. Endothelial sort of cells uh, are actually very stable sort of cells genetically, so they do not develop resistance uh, uh, very sort of quickly or hardly sort of at all. So targeting uh, endothelial cells uh, rather than uh, tumor cells makes a lot more sense. The, so they do that sort of directly, uh, but they also do exactly sort of the opposite of what the tumor wants to do. So it downregulates uh, proangiogenic sort of factors uh, and upregulates uh, antiangiogenic sort of factors. Uh. There's also these uh, endothelial sort of progenitor sort of cells coming from the bone marrow, which the tumor mobilizes uh, and uh, homes in uh, whatever it wants it to do it. And again, sort of uh, metronomic sort of chemotherapy inhibits that. Then there is the other sort of second sort of branch, important sort of branch of uh, metronomic, which is uh, activation of immunity. And it does that by doing sort of uh, many sort of two sort of uh, mechanisms. One is uh, you've got uh, some of your sort of T sort of uh, lymphocytes, T sort of cells, what's called Tregs, the regulatory T cells, uh, which are sort of immunosuppressive uh, T cells. And uh, uh, so the uh, metronomic sort of chemo reduces these sort of regular T cells and also some other sort of uh, myeloid derived uh, suppressor sort of cells that also coming from the bone marrow. And also what it does, it uh, maturates uh, your dendritic sort of cells uh, that will attack your sort of tumor sort of cells. Uh. It does have sort of uh, a smaller 
direct sort of tumor sort of activity, uh, killing sort of uh, cancer sort of stem sort of cells, uh, and also induces sort of tumor sort of dormancy. So it just sort of uh, puts that sort of tumor into a sort of cell cycle sort of arrest. So you've got sort of an equilibrium then between uh, tumor proliferation and cells that die by apoptosis. And uh, this sort of cartoon sort of here just uh, summarizes uh, all these uh, different sort of actions. So you've got uh, at the bottom sort of here, decreased sort of angiogenic cytokines. And on the other sort of side, you've got increased sort of anti-angiogenic uh, factors. Decrease sort of uh, endothelial sort of progenitor sort of cells and increase sort of endothelial sort of toxicity. Uh, cancer stem cells, uh, obviously sort of direct sort of activity. And also your immunity sort of at the top. Uh, so it reduces your Tregs uh, and myeloid derived uh, <coughs> cells uh, and obviously increases sort of a uh, cytotoxic response uh, on uh, T lymphocytes and uh, natural killer sort of cells. Uh. What drugs are used? Uh, uh, as I said, oral drugs are definitely sort of the ones sort of mostly sort of used uh, in, uh, especially sort of uh, in veterinary sort of uh, oncology as opposed to humans. Sort of in human, they do use sort of uh, quite a bit uh, um, of injectable one as well. Uh, Sacfosamide, I put it there sort of in larger sort of letters because it's the one that uh, both in human and veterinary oncology is uh, widely sort of used uh, compared to all the others. Uh, uh, the one in red, I put them in, there are the ones that are used uh, in veterinary oncology, uh, etoposide, chlorambucil, obviously, lomostin, uh, they're also used sort of uh, quite a bit. Uh, in human, obviously, they've got lots of others sort of as well. Injectable are uh, your usual one, vincristin, vinblastin, uh, vinorelbin, sort of taxan, gentisabin, and fluorouracil. Uh, you can use them as sort of single drugs. Uh, a lot of the times, especially in human oncology, they would use combination of uh, uh, some of these sort of drugs as well. Sort of. The other sort of side of things is using uh, other sort of drugs, and obviously we use sort of uh, COX-2 inhibitors in people sort of as well. Sort of celecoxib is one that used a lot in people. Uh, we use a lot of uh, obviously pyroxicum, meloxicum, pyrococcib. And then there are other drugs sort of as well, which especially in uh, human uh, metronomic are used. Uh, thalidomide is also very much used. Uh, and then sort of tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Uh, and uh, um, this is just sort of uh, um, one of the sort of uh, um, bevacizumab. And also there are some other sort of uh, uh, what we call uh, repurposed sort of drugs uh, like propanolol and metformin, uh, which are sort of used, obviously metformin is uh, an anti sort of uh, glycemic sort of drug, oral drug sort of uh, for people, uh, but it does have uh, certain sort of uh, properties uh, that you use, uh, that you can use against sort of tumors uh, and propanerol sort of as well is a cardiac drug, but used sort of in, in uh, oncology sort of as well. And so you can use uh, a combination of all these sort of drugs. Uh, this is just sort of uh, a quick sort of, uh, how many sort of, uh, it's coming obviously next sort of, uh, how many papers do you think uh, they've got? This is obviously human sort of metronomic. Uh, how many papers, uh, if you do sort of a PubMed sort of search, uh, you're gonna have sort of, uh, in human oncology, just give me a number. <coughs> Any number? Yeah, sort of. Uh, there's about sort of uh, uh, twelve, sort of uh, twelve hundred sort of papers. Uh, but there's actually sort of uh, all. To, these are actually review sort of paper. If you take everything, is about sort of uh, more than sort of five thousand sort of papers on metronomic. And this is roughly sort of a split um, with all this, that sort of pie sort of chart of different sort of tumors. Uh, you can see that the interesting one is that uh, obviously you've got the common tumors sort of obviously common. So you've got sort of breast sort of cancer, colon sort of cancer, prostate and ovarian. But then you've also got sort of uh, on this left sort of side, uh, you've got some of the sort of less sort of common if you want. Uh, and you can see you've got sort of also all these obviously that's all solid tumors. Uh, but you can also use it in hematological sort of tumors. Uh, so uh, there's uh, quite a lot uh, used uh, with sort of uh, multiple myelomas uh, and uh, uh, lymphomas sort of as well. And obviously sort of CNS and some of the sort of uh, less sort of common sort of tumors. Uh. So is the old sort of uh, plain sort of sailing? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not, unfortunately, sort of. Uh, um, because there's uh, a few issues and a few sort of problems. Uh, 
Um, the first one is uh, even in uh, humans, and obviously they use it uh, loads. Uh, why is the screen sort of going sort of uh, um, Although they've obviously used uh, some of these drugs for many, many years, and psychophosphamide especially, there's a uh, lack of uh, pharmacokinetic sort of data. So for a lot of these sort of drugs, we don't actually know what the OBD is. So they use a drug, a bit like us. We don't know, obviously, for most drugs, uh, what actually the, the correct sort of dose is. We just sort of uh, use sort of dosages. Uh, but obviously this is true in, sort of in uh, human sort of oncology sort of as well. Uh, so most drugs, even cyclophosphamide, they don't really know sort of, uh, they sort of use uh, 50 milligrams uh, per sort of, uh, per day, per sort of person. But uh, they've got no idea if that's, they should use less, sort of more. Uh, obviously they don't know sort of how the different sort of drugs interact, uh, interact sort of between sort of the, between them themselves. The problem is, and this is obviously true sort of, uh, obviously for any of our sort of studies, uh, um, they don't have sort of good sort of studies. Uh, because uh, usually these are sort of single arm, so they don't have sort of controls. They've got small numbers. And usually sort of uh, they use metronomic after they've used the uh, normal sort of standard of care. They've exhausted all the options. Uh, then obviously they go down to metronomic, which is uh, obviously very late in, 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 uh, in the disease. And obviously this is exactly what we do in all our studies, more or less, sort of probably 99% of our studies sort of uh, uh, there's still sort of a, they, uh, how to evaluate response. So we've got sort of lack of biomarkers. Uh, um, and it's obviously how you're going to assess uh, how sort of something is actually working sort of or not. We said that uh, toxicity is not a problem and uh, it's not really sort of, except uh, in a few sort of cases sort of where they've had sort of uh, leukemia developing some of these sort of patients uh, after sort of using uh, cyclosomide and etoposide. Obviously, remember that uh, these sort of drugs are used for months, years, sort of. Uh, so something obviously goes a bit wrong. And uh, again, we said uh, resistance uh, is not a problem, but uh, it is sort of uh, to a certain sort of extent. Uh, so even sort of in people, it's not, uh, uh, it's not all sort of plain sort of selling if you want to. Dogs. How many studies we got in dogs? Give me a number. <laughs> 23. Okay. These are sort of a uh, uh, kind of uh, paper. I've left out uh, like case reports and things sort of. So these are kind of uh, uh, decent sort of kind of sort of papers sort of where they've got more than one animal sort of if you want. And this is a bit of sort of split if you want. Uh. So we've got uh, uh, tumors uh, on your sort of right sort of side. And you can see sort of a uh, is uh, number one if you want. And then there's a few others, osteosarc, lungs, soft tissue sort of sarcomas, uh, TCCs, uh, and then sort of uh, mammary, a few mammary, and then obviously a mixture of uh, different sort of studies. Drugs, well, you can see obviously cyclophosphamide is your number one sort of drug in uh, almost every, every one of these sort of studies. Uh, Corambucil, obviously a few sort of uh, papers on that. And then, like I said, sort of uh, etoposide and sort of lumosin. Uh, uh, some of these sort of studies obviously uh, have got more than one of these sort of drugs in. And then I've just put that one sort of just out of interest sort of des design. And uh, we've got obviously between uh, retrospective and prospective sort of studies, obviously most of them sort of almost sort of double is, uh, is usually sort of pro retrospective. Uh, and those are our sort of uh, numbers. Uh, if you put all these sort of papers sort of together, you've got sort of uh, that kind of sort of numbers of, uh, um, of dogs. Uh, just a few sort of uh, papers just to give you some ideas uh, uh, I put in sort of uh, the first one at the top is interesting because uh, it's a paper that came out in uh, 2000 and uh, uh, it's not strictly sort of speaking a metronomic sort of chemo sort of uh, they've, this is sort of uh, uh, dogs with sarcoma, done obviously sort of surgery sort of first uh, then followed with standard sort of chemo but they also add uh, minocycline which is a tetracycline so it's not obviously a chemo sort of drug it's an antibiotic uh, Obviously, it does have sort of uh, certain sort of uh, properties, sort of, and it does sort of work uh, um, in the modified sort of the uh, tumor sort of microenvironment, uh, and so that's sort of interesting because they used it uh, in a metronomic sort of way because it was used uh, on a daily sort of basis, if you want. Uh, they didn't achieve uh, any sort of uh, 
uh, improve survival compared to just uh, um, surgery and sort of standard sort of chemo. But it was just interesting that uh, they did it uh, and also because it's year 2000, so everything happened in uh, year 2000. Um, the second sort of paper is the, the first one where they actually used the proper uh, metronomic sort of chemo. And again, it's uh, dogs with a mangiosarc and they used uh, both sort of cyclophosphamide and uh, etoposide in this sort of case post uh, uh, splenectomy obviously and uh, with uh, they also had two so sort of groups one with just uh, uh, standard sort of chemo with doxo and uh, they actually sort of had better survival not great sort of different but uh, uh, statistically sort of significant sort of better survival in dogs uh, with metronomic compared to uh, standard sort of chemo the first sort of real sort of paper that started off though uh, metronomic uh, in uh, dogs uh, is this one here sort of from 2008 where they used the uh, sulfosamide and pyroxicum uh, in dogs with incomplete resected uh, soft tissue sarcomas uh, that's kind of uh, the first sort of kind of key stone uh, paper um, that sort of set off uh, metronomic in uh, in dogs if you want uh, and uh, obviously they had so the two groups one with just sort of surgery and just followed the other one uh, surgery and uh, metronomic and obviously the dogs with uh, metronomic uh, uh, also you're not talking survival sort of here because if this is soft tissue sarcoma so dogs wouldn't really die but uh, uh, you're looking at uh, <coughs> um, tumor free sort of interval and obviously the dog with metronomic did uh, far far better compared to the one that were just monitored uh, this one bottom one is the more recent one uh, and it's interesting because this one uses corambucil and it's uh, dogs with uh, urine sort of uh, uh, bladder sort of uh, TCC and uh, again sort of uh, these are sort of dogs is a good sort of paper because uh, these are dog uh, that uh, they failed uh, lots of other sort of previous sort of treatment and then sort of uh, um, started on uh, metronomic sort of corambucil and they still sort of get uh, a pretty good uh, uh, survival sort of uh, out of it uh, with, uh, with, with the metronomic and uh, virtually no side effects. Cats, how many papers? Three. <coughs> three, but obviously, well, you can see, these are the three. And uh, um, they're just sort of uh, uh, all over the place. So they're not real sort of. And this one, I put sort of a case report sort of as well. So obviously, otherwise, it would be none sort of. Uh, because the first sort of paper sort of there at the top, uh, it's got sort of uh, um, dogs and sort of cats. It's only got two cats in there. And uh, so, again, sort of uh, not big numbers. Uh, and... Uh, um, using a uh, uh, cyclophosphamide uh, the one sort of uh, the one in the middle is interesting sort of but again obviously it's a case report is uh, a, a cat with a big uh, abdominal sort of mass which was uh, uh, an amangia sort of sarcoma uh, they didn't do any sort of surgery on this sort of cat they just put him on sort of uh, oral sort of uh, metronomy sort of cyclophosphamide and he lived another sort of 10 months so it's very good was it because of the cyclophosphamide who knows uh, this is the only one uh, where they've got sort of uh, a few sort of cats, sort of 24 sort of cats. Uh, the problem is that uh, they've got a whole variety of different sort of tumors, different sort of treatments, because they had uh, uh, 13 sort of sarcomas, 12 carcinomas, one melanoma, and one neuroendocrine. So big sort of mixture of everything, uh, using uh, again sort of uh, cyclophosphamide and uh, um, Obviously, there's no control sort of group, uh, and uh, so you can only just uh, um, document uh, kind of survival and sort of. So, yeah, in cats, we've got sort of uh, no real sort of data sort of uh, at all, sort of uh, unfortunately yet. And, uh, um, but obviously, sort of, uh, I think sort of uh, we should definitely sort of use uh, metronomic sort of uh, uh, chemotherapy. So, that's sort of uh, metronomic. Next. Uh, we we'll sort of uh, talk a little bit about sort of uh, Tanovia, which is this sort of new sort of or newish sort of drug. It's been out sort of a few years now, uh, developed in the States by a small sort of company, and uh, um, it's been sort of out and sort of uh, uh, available sort of in the UK via sort of a special sort of import certificate uh, uh, for possibly sort of about three years now, uh, but later said now you can sort of get it for some reason. Um, the chemical sort of obviously name is uh, Rabacfosidin 
uh, which is, uh, I'll read that, sort of it's a double prodrug of uh, a nucleotide called PMEG. And if you want, you can read sort of uh, the actual sort of chemical sort of name there. Um, it's the prodrug because you can't use sort of PMEG directly because it's very toxic if used systemically. So you use sort of a prodrug. And then uh, what you do is uh, Rabacfosidine is loaded preferentially into your lymphoid sort of cells, and the cells then activate your prodrug. They make sort of PMEG, which then is obviously toxic and it inhibits sort of your DNA sort of polymerases and DNA sort of synthesis. This is the first sort of the paper that obviously got the license, and it was not obviously named Tanovia, sort of obviously just sort of GS, sort of just a number. And uh, they've also got uh, uh, 38 dogs, uh, 21 dogs pre-treated, and 17 naive sort of dogs. Most of them were B cells and a few T cells. Obviously, it was a phase one, two sort of trial because they were looking at toxicity and uh, optimal sort of dose. And you can sort of see sort of uh, on the right uh, your um, survival sort of uh, um, couple of miles survival sort of curve, uh, and uh, uh, there's a big sort of difference. Uh, the uh, solid line, the sort of B sort of cells, uh, the dotted one is sort of T cells. Uh, um, it didn't work very well sort of at all in sort of T, um, T sort of cell lymphomas, but it worked pretty well with, uh, with your B sort of cells, uh, especially if you think that uh, a lot of these sort of dogs were the sort of pre-treated, so they sort of seen uh, other sort of um, chemotherapy before. And they came out with this sort of dose, which is one meg per kilo IV, slow over sort of 30 minutes, every sort of three weeks, uh, for five treatments, and that's the license for this sort of drug. Uh, second sort of study, uh, come out sort of uh, much more so recent, uh, is uh, they tried to alternate uh, Tanovia with uh, doxorubicin. And again, sort of they've got uh, uh, most dogs with B cell and a few with T cell. And then they alternated sort of uh, rubafosidine and doxo every three weeks uh, for six total sort of treatments. And again, sort of uh, you can sort of see your sort of uh, progression free sort of survival. Uh, the obviously cumulative one is 194 sort of days or so 200 days, but if you sort of see the difference between your B and T cells is uh, massive because you got uh, over 200 days with a B cell lymphoma, only 43 for T cell lymphoma. And obviously you can see your couple of miles sort of curve uh, on the bottom sort of right sort of there. So it looks like for B cell lymphoma, uh, it's, um, it works so pretty well. Uh, next sort of paper, they looked at uh, dogs with relapsed uh, B cell lymphoma, looked obviously efficacy and adverse sort of effect using two different sort of dosages. Um, they enrolled 55 dogs, they failed uh, only one uh, dogs rubicin based sort of protocol. I don't know why obviously they chose two sort of dosages because they already sort of decided their dose before, but uh, so 16 had a 0.8 and 34 dogs at one mg per kilo. Overall response rate, 74%, which is good, very good. And uh, with a complete remission of 45%, uh, with a progression fee interval of 180 sort of days, uh, but uh, dogs that went into complete remission uh, had a sort of uh, progression fee interval of 203 days. So I thought it was, uh, again, sort of uh, uh, pretty good. In terms of... Uh, Adverse sort of effects, you've got uh, your classic ones, similar sort of to other sort of chemo sort of drugs, uh, many sort of GI effects, usually mild, self-limiting, uh, hematological, again, the same sort of neutropenia, sort of thrombocytopenia, uh, possible some liver enzyme sort of elevation. The two which are really sort of uh, uh, more specific uh, and peculiar to this sort of drug are, one is dermatological, uh, because you can have... Uh, erythema and uh, alopecia of the pinna, sort of ear canal and sort of dorsum. And uh, it, that can obviously escalate into crusting, ulceration, uh, and obviously sort of discomfort and sort of pain. Uh, and obviously things sort of then uh, hyperpigment sort of afterwards. Uh, that's sort of quite so sort of specific. Uh, it's only sort of demonologic, it's not sort of going to be a big deal. The big deal is uh, the second one, which is uh, pulmonary fibrosis, uh, which they found sort of happened about sort of 4% of uh, the cases they've um, tested a drug on. It's usually a delayed event and uh, uh, they found that the medium number of treatment uh, was five 
but obviously that could be sort of uh, the range was between sort of three and ten. Obviously, sort of fatal once it sort of uh, develops. So their sort of advice uh, on the sort of uh, uh, sheet is uh, to do sort of a baseline, uh, and then over three, two to three months, uh, thoracic sort of radiographs, uh, and there's a specific sort of contraindication uh, not to use it in Westies because obviously they can already be sort of predisposed uh, to sort of uh, pulmonary sort of fibrosis. Uh, or, or obviously any dogs that you already got uh, or suspect uh, some pulmonary sort of issues uh, don't sort of use it. Uh, Extravasation, uh, they sort of had two sort of cases that resolved sort of uh, without sort of uh, too much of a problem. Uh, in the States, uh, it still sort of has uh, a conditional sort of license for both sort of naive and relapsed canine sort of lymphoma. At the moment, they're still sort of doing some sort of trials to have sort of full sort of license. They've got, they've treated more than 600 sort of dogs. Uh, they're also doing trials uh, in, uh, with different, uh, other different sort of uh, cancers, uh, like multiple myeloma, cutaneous sort of T-cell lymphoma, leukemia, and also they started doing some trials in cats sort of as well. Uh, as I said, uh, if it is possible to import it with a VMD sort of certificate. Uh, at the moment, uh, they, they're not... Uh, shipping any sort of drugs sort of across and uh, I don't know sort of asked them sort of when uh, it was going to be available and they said that they don't know I've no idea sort of why because they're still using it in the states so I don't know if they've, if they've got uh, um, a production sort of problem they just keep it uh, for the states and they don't sort of ship it over here I've no idea or maybe they're waiting for Brexit and then they'll sort of start shipping again sort of I don't know uh, it's quite expensive it's not cheap the problem is uh, it's a refrigerated item so it needs to come uh, shipped obviously on ice and sort of by with sort of courier. So the courier costs almost uh, as much as the drug, unfortunately. Uh, you can get it, so sort of, they come in sort of a box of uh, at, uh, 10 sort of uh, vials. And uh, obviously the more you buy, obviously the cheaper it becomes because then the courier is only once. But uh, um, yeah, otherwise sort of uh, that's the big problem. But uh, I've used it sort of a few times and I must sort of say um, I've used it in sort of, well, the, my sort of experience is the same, sort of uh, B cell lymphoma, it works, T cell lymphoma, it doesn't. Uh, and I've done sort of some dogs where I've done uh, first sort of protocol, uh, uh, then sort of uh, rescue one, rescue two, sort of, and this was the last sort of straw and obviously it still worked uh, even after uh, several sort of rescue protocols. So when I've kind of... Uh, uh, sort of, uh, um, I didn't have any more drugs sort of to use in this sort of country, and uh, um, so yeah, so B cell lymphoma, I think it, it does work. Last sort of topic immunotherapy. Uh, so, what we want to do is uh, exploit uh, our own sort of immune sort of system to recognize and uh, eliminate sort of cancer because that would be really sort of good. Uh, how do we know the immune system uh, does obviously work against sort of cancer? And there's uh, a few different sort of uh, um, things you can sort of think of. Obviously, there's, uh, we're talking human sort of oncology, obviously, there's uh, quite a few examples of uh, patients that uh, obviously went into spontaneous sort of uh, remission without any sort of treatment. Um, you've got sort of uh, the presence of uh, tumor-specific uh, cytotoxic T cells uh, within the tumor or in the sort of draining sort of lymph nodes. Those sort of uh, T cells, they might not work properly, but obviously they are sort of there. So if you can try and sort of uh, get them sort of going, then uh, that would be sort of uh, uh, very good. You've got a whole sort of uh, miscellany of other sort of uh, uh, cells, like sort of obviously monocytes, lymphocytes, and plasmacytes, sort of plasma, plasmacytic sort of cells uh, that infiltrate sort of tumor sort of cells. Uh. We know that uh, Incidence of certain sort of cancers uh, is increased uh, in immunosuppressed sort of patients. And also we know that uh, we've got sort of some good results uh, in certain sort of cancers when we use uh, immunomodulators. Uh, so something that stimulates the immune system. A quick sort of overview of your immune sort of system. Obviously we've got sort of uh, two types of response. We've got an innate and an acquired or adaptive sort of uh, response. Your innate is your rapid, active, non-specific. It doesn't have a memory. And that obviously includes your physical barriers like your skin or sort of mucosa, all your sort of complement proteins, 
and all your sort of different phagocytic sort of cells uh, from macrophages, uh, dendritic cells, uh, NK cells, and neutrophils, uh, and all your sort of cytokines. Uh. On the other hand, you've got your adaptive system, which is slow developing, but it's specific, and it does have a memory. And obviously that includes your T lymphocytes, uh, with your obviously sort of cytotoxic, uh, CD8 positive, uh, help a sort of cell sort of T CD4 positive, and obviously what we said, what we mentioned at the beginning, your T regs as well, and obviously your B lymphocytes with your antibodies, sort of specific as well. Why does it not work? Because tumors uh, manage to evade your immune sort of system or suppress your immune sort of system. There's lots of sort of cytokines, these are just sort of two transforming growth factor beta into leukin 10 that uh, obviously suppress uh, your immune sort of system. Uh, your phagocytic sort of cells uh, get sort of impaired and get inactivated. They don't work sort of as well. And uh, again, so we go back to your Tregs, uh, they get sort of upregulated by tumor sort of cells uh, and they just sort of dumps them down your immune sort of system. We sort of known sort of already sort of uh, since sort of the early 1900s uh, that uh, they noticed and documented some patients with sort of cancer that then developed uh, an incidental bacterial infection uh, did a lot better than people without infection. With this, obviously, they tried and they developed a bacterial sort of vaccine and they used it in patients with sarcoma. And one that is still so used sort of today is your sort of a BCG sort of vaccine, your microbacterial sort of vaccine. And there's lots of sort of papers sort of still where they used it uh, and uh, with good sort of success sort of, uh, and uh, you can instill it uh, in a bladder, for example, and that will uh, then uh, cause uh, a local inflammatory response. Uh, obviously, we go back to the beginning, just something to try and sort of uh, wake up your immune sort of system. And uh, BCG has been used in uh, lots of different sort of cancers, uh, uh, LNK is sort of there, sort of uh, bladder through TCCs, osteosarc, lymphoma, prostatic, uh, transmission of venereal tumor, mammary tumor, sarcoids, and squamous sort of cell sort of carcinomas. One drug that, uh, um, so anybody sort of used uh, imifimod, Aldara, Creamer? Uh, it's, a, it's a human sort of uh, um, cream, obviously. Uh, it does sort of stimulate both your innate and acquired sort of response. It's licensed uh, for genital warts, basal cell carcinoma, or Bowen's sort of disease, which is a squamous cell carcinoma in situ. And uh, it's very sort of effective uh, if you've got cats uh, with uh, what we call sort of a Bowen like sort of disease. So, cats with early squamous cell carcinoma especially sort of uh, ears, noses. If you pick it up sort of early, uh, obviously nose is uh, tricky to obviously treat because you put the cream on and they lick it and it's gone. Whereas ears, obviously, it's a lot sort of uh, easier and doable. So it needs to be um, in situ, ideally. So it needs to, to be sort of, so your basement membrane should not be sort of uh, been uh, breached. Uh, so early stages, but uh, uh, it, it works really sort of well, sort of, uh, and uh, you can sort of get away, sort of. Uh, if you've got sort of an advanced sort of case, it doesn't work, uh, but early cases it works really well. And again, it's uh, it's an immune sort of modulator. Uh, the other sort of non-specific immunotherapy is interleukin two, uh, which is obviously it's one of the interleukins, and uh, used in people. Nowadays, not so much because they've got so many other sort of newer sort of drugs, but uh, still used uh, in uh, uh, people with uh, renal sort of carcinoma, metastatic melanoma. The problem is uh, with a systemic, so IV sort of uh, administration, uh, you get very severe side effects with it. So it's used, but uh, you get side effects. But also what they've done and what they're doing is actually an intratumor administration. And there's quite a few sort of papers uh, in uh, human cell oncology and a few papers in uh, um, veterinary sort of uh, oncology. You use a, a small dose. The dose they use systemically, they're actually quite big dosages, uh, whereas intratumor is a small dose. Uh, uh, most papers have only got sort of a single use, but you can actually sort of do it uh, regularly sort of uh, into, into the tumor. 
Obviously, you can combine it with all the other uh, modalities like sort of surgery, radio, chemo. All these sort of papers are human papers, bladder TCCs, epithelial carcinoma, melanoma, mesothelioma, ovarian carcinoma. They've got all the papers that got minimal, no side effects. Uh, they, they've documented the efficacy against metastasis sort of as well. It's called an umbrella sort of effect, which means that uh, um, you inject it, uh, especially when you've got uh, widespread metastasis, uh, and uh, the classic one would be melanoma, where you've got, uh, uh, you could have hundreds of different uh, melanomas, uh, metastases on your body. You can't just keep jabbing all of them. So you just sort of inject some, and obviously they've seen that uh, even the one that you've not injected, uh, they've actually responded sort of to the tumor, to the interleukin. Uh, the speed of regression is sort of variable because it depends uh, how fast or how slow that sort of tumor uh, is actually growing. And uh, there's a few sort of studies, uh, something very successful uh, with, uh, anybody doing large animal here? So nobody's doing bovine ocular squamous cell carcinomas. Okay, that's fine. But obviously, yes, uh, uh, apparently it works really well. Um, there's some sort of papers with uh, canine sort of fibrosarcomas, mast cell tumors, uh, and transmissible, transmissible venereal sort of tumors. Uh, equine sarcoids, anybody doing horses here? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah, quite a few papers. And again, sort of uh, seems to be working sort of quite well with uh, uh, sarcoids sort of as well. The mechanism, uh, we're not 100% sort of sure, sort of, but I don't know if you can read sort of uh, the, the right sort of uh, cartoon sort of there. What you do is uh, you've got uh, uh, your sort of tumor and you inject your IL-2 in it. That sort of causes a massive uh, blood vessel leakage, uh, massive sort of edema of that sort of tumor. And that's where you get your side effects uh, when you do it uh, systemically, because uh, your whole body just sort of becomes edematous if you want. Uh, and you get sort of massive like sort of flu-like sort of symptoms, really sort of severe. But if you do it just sort of locally, it doesn't happen. Um, massive sort of uh, edema and what that sort of uh, does uh, it causes obviously sort of hypoxia and uh, your tumor cells sort of die that's your first uh, kind of more immediate effect what happens sort of next you've got these sort of uh, dead sort of uh, tumor sort of cells your immune sort of system recognizing them and goes in moves in uh, and obviously sort of takes them out and clears them out and obviously what that sort of does uh, it then uh, <coughs> uh, enable sort of these uh, um, phagocyte, phagocytic sort of cells, uh, uh, lymphocytes, uh, to uh, recognize uh, your um, tumor sort of cells, uh, and that's where you get your umbrella effect because then uh, they will recognize the same sort of cell in a different bit of sort of tumor if you want. We've got uh, um, this one is interleukin sort of two, it's called proleukin, it's, it's a human sort of a preparation. Uh, we do have one which is, uh, it's called Oncept IL-2, uh, which is uh, uh, developed by Mariel, well, many years now. And uh, it's what, uh, it's a recombinant sort of feline sort of uh, interleukin sort of two, which is licensed as an adjuvant sort of treatment uh, for feline injector site sort of sarcomas. Uh, after the license is after surgery, and so radio. Um, anybody used uh, the Oncept IL-2? Hmm? Um, so yeah, that's obviously one sort of version of uh, um, the um, interleukin sort of two. Uh, this one is uh, an example of a dog uh, I treated sort of uh, recent. Uh, it was a little Welsh little collie. She sort of was diagnosed uh, in July sort of 17 with a very big uh, I don't know if you can sort of see it sort of at the top sort of there, uh, right sort of uh, at the back of the mouth sort of uh, squamous cell sort of carcinoma. Obviously, you're not going to do any sort of anything sort of surgical, so we just did some palliative sort of treatment. Uh, I did sort of uh, carboplatin first, it didn't sort of work. I switched to uh, palladia and sort of meloxicum. Um, maybe it sort of improved a bit, but the dogs sort of developed sort of proteinuria, so I stopped the palladia. In December, sort of, I did uh, IL-2 sort of intratumorally, and I then added uh, corambucil metronomic. And uh, uh, so obviously that's sort of December, sort of, uh, it's uh, the one sort of up there, your second sort of picture. 
and then you can sort of see I was really this is the first dog I've used it on and I was really sort of scared because uh, it was right sort of uh, in your sort of a uh, kind of all sort of firing sort of area so I thought sort of what I'm going to do with this sort of if this obviously swells up and this dog is going to die sort of suffocate nothing happened sort of at all dog didn't know sort of uh, and then obviously you got sort of uh, other sort of pictures I don't know if you can appreciate especially from the back sort of uh, the one sort of uh, both in uh, January and sort of March you can see the different death sort of tumor is just being sort of kind of uh, eaten sort of away if you want uh, with the, the L2. I'd actually repeated it and uh, um, and obviously eventually we put it to sleep sort of in May 18 uh, but uh, um, that actually sort of worked really well I said and no no sort of side effects sort of at all. Uh, I then used it in other dogs I've used it in cats with sort of a squamous cell carcinoma sort of as well and uh, um, and no, no side effects sort of at all. Sort of, uh, I've used it in some uh, melanoma as well. Sort of, uh, when you've got sort of metastatic sort of melanoma, sort of uh, uh, subcutaneous sort of metastasis, uh, and uh, yeah, no side effects at all. And obviously, it, it, well, in this sort of uh, obviously site, uh, you need sort of to anesthetize the dog to do it because it's just sort of. Uh, but otherwise, if you've got it uh, uh, in sort of uh, in a more sort of uh, uh, amenable sort of place, it's just like any other sort of. Uh, uh, quickly sort of then uh, uh, talk about instead uh, all of this we talked about was non-specific immunotherapy obviously vaccines are going to be specific and uh, the one that uh, we're interested in is uh, melanoma and then uh, we spent a few times a few sort of words about lymphoma vaccine and osteosarc vaccine obviously melanoma vaccine uh, has been out for many years for about sort of 10 years now plus um, again, it's from the States, so it needs to be imported uh, from, uh, from the States. The way sort of it works, it's uh, very sort of clever. Um, even sort of uh, the human oncologists, they've not got this yet. Uh, because uh, you sort of uh, using uh, tyrosinase, which is the enzyme that controls your melanin production. Uh, using the human version, which is 85% homologous to your canine tyrosinase, so the vaccine is made up of a DNA plasmid, which encodes the human tyrosinase gene. And obviously what it does is once you administer it, it starts producing human tyrosinase in the dog. Although it's 85% homologous, the dog does realize, the dog immune system does realize that the two tyrosinase are not the same. So it starts sort of mounting an immune response to the human tyrosinase. But what it doesn't sort of know is that obviously those antibodies uh, will then cross-react uh, with its own tyrosinase. Uh, and obviously your melanoma sort of cells uh, do produce a lot of tyrosinase. Uh, so that sort of targets then uh, your uh, melanoma sort of cells. Uh, initial sort of trials sort of started more than 10 years ago now. Uh, the idea and uh, the license for the vaccine is that you do surgery first uh, because you want to reduce your microscopic disease uh, and then use the vaccine sort of afterwards. Uh, the vaccine is uh, administered sort of transdermally with a needle-free sort of vaccination device. It's air sort of driven, uh, just sort of in the medial aspect uh, of the thigh. And uh, you do one injection every two weeks uh, times four, and then if you're still alive, uh, a booster every six months after that. Uh, no side effects or really mild. You might sort of have sort of a bit of uh, pain and sort of bruising uh, where you actually sort of done it because it just sort of uh, injects it under sort of really sort of high sort of pressure. Uh, the gun makes a horrible noise as well. Uh, so what I tend to do is I tend to uh, kind of fire it, uh, um, obviously empty sort of uh, uh, near the dog because otherwise the dog just sort of uh, jumps out of that sort of skin sort of if you do it. Uh, uh, but otherwise, apart from that, sort of uh, no side effects sort of at all. So sort of, I've actually never seen even sort of a uh, pain or bruising sort of uh, um, in uh, uh, where you actually sort of injected it. Uh, um, there's lots of papers obviously come out and uh, up there sort of you've got the initial one that, that obviously got sort of the license uh, and then you've got different papers that are coming out of uh, different sort of part of the world uh, obviously sort of there's uh, some Europe there's some South Africa obviously some sort of uh, from the States. Uh, the jury is still sort of out on some melanoma sort of vaccines. Uh, uh, some of the studies uh, Obviously, the initial study, they sort of showed uh, a very good improvement. Otherwise, they would never got a license uh, in the first place. Uh, but then lots of other papers, uh, both sort of uh, 
this side and the other side of the pond and sort of South Africa, the bottom one is sort of South Africa. Uh, they've actually not sort of seen a significant difference in survival between uh, using the vaccine, not using the vaccine. Uh, again, sort of these are more sort of, uh, uh, sort of here sort of as well. You've got sort of a top one is uh, from, uh, from the UK. Middle one is from the UK as well. The bottom one uh, is uh, a, uh, presented uh, at the Veterans sort of Cancer Society meeting a few years ago. And there was uh, a bit of a summary of all the dogs sort of uh, treated uh, in the States. Uh, and you've got sort of uh, 320 sort of dogs uh, from uh, different sort of groups. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a good number of sort of dogs. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously sort of uh, Phil sort of Bergman, who's uh, the first sort of author sort of there, and he's the guy who was involved uh, in the development of vaccine. Uh, and obviously he swears by it that obviously it does work. And obviously in this sort of paper sort of here, obviously uh, you do have sort of a big difference between dogs treated and not, dogs not sort of treated. Uh, but yeah, sort of uh, oncology sort of still sort of, uh, um, some people see sort of uh, do sort of like it and uh, swear by it. And, uh, but uh, yeah, some results are pretty sort of conflicting if you want. So what I do is uh, um, I use it, I've used it. Uh, I do sort of obviously um, propose it to, to the client. Uh, especially because uh, there's nothing else you can actually sort of propose to them. Sort of, uh, uh, if you think sort of the license uh, was or still is, is you want to reduce it to microscopic disease, uh, and uh, really sort of uh, should be dogs in sort of stage sort of two and sort of three. So dogs uh, that they don't have, they might have uh, lymphonode metastasis, but no distant metastasis. Uh, obviously, since uh, the vaccine sort of came out, people have been using it uh, all over sort of the place. Um, a lot uh, where you're not doing sort of surgery because you've got already sort of uh, other sort of uh, you cannot sort of uh, uh, people that obviously don't want to do sort of invasive sort of surgeries uh, or you've got sort of uh, you're in stage four with distant metastasis uh, so people have been using it uh, in all sorts of sort of dogs if you want uh, so I always sort of uh, but the thing is obviously there's no alternative uh, to, to to the vaccine sort of uh, if you want to do something chemo it doesn't really sort of work um, real therapy works sort of a little bit but obviously not if you've got widespread sort of metastasis. So there's no real alternative. And in fact, sort of, uh, I've used it in a lot of dogs uh, where we had obviously widespread metastasis, uh, either sort of a lung or sort of a skin metastasis. Uh, does it work? No. Um, in these sort of cases especially. The problem with, uh, and this is true for any sort of vaccine, is that uh, unlike sort of chemo that works uh, the moment you put it in, uh, a vaccine needs sort of time to obviously sort of uh, produce uh, your antibodies. Uh, and obviously that sort of takes uh, four, six weeks uh, before it can actually sort of start sort of working. And the problem is that that dog might not have four, six weeks. So that's the big sort of problem with the vaccine. But I don't have a problem using it. Uh, it's, it's not cheap. Again, sort of like uh, everything, obviously it's imported again sort of from the States. Uh, uh, it's not sort of cheap, but uh, if there's no financial problems and issues, uh, I would definitely sort of use it because uh, it's just sort of something else you can use uh, apart from just sort of surgery in these sort of dogs. So I don't have a problem using it. Uh, how effective it is, uh, I'm a little bit sort of dubious of as well. This is another one. Uh, this is sort of coming out from Italy and uh, um, it uh, works along the same line as the um, Merial sort of vaccine because they're using uh, uh, this is called sort of uh, it's a um, CGSP uh, CSPG4, so chondrine sulfate protoglycan 4, which is a cell surface protein uh, expressed by melanoma sort of cells, uh, which is involved in uh, proliferation, migration, and sort of invasion. Again, so it's expressed in uh, most of these sort of uh, uh, melanoma sort of cells, 60% K9, 80% sort of human. And again, sort of uh, the two are sort of uh, very sort of similar, sort of 80%. So the idea is exactly the same. You've got a vaccine with a DNA sort of plasmid that encodes the human one, is obviously uh, injected into the dog. Again, you go through surgery first to reduce the microscopic sort of disease. And then you inject your sort of vaccine and the vaccine produces sort of antibodies, uh, not only against the human variant, but also against the, the canine sort of variant as well. So exactly the same mechanism. This sort of vaccine is administered in a different sort of way because uh, um, 
it uses uh, what is called sort of uh, electrosuroporation, which is uh, application of uh, short high voltage uh, electric sort of pulses. It's called sort of electro sort of vaccination. Uh, and again, it's obviously done sort of uh, monthly, uh, intramuscularly. Obviously, you need to anesthetize the patient because uh, this is bloody painful if you do it. And uh, this one sort of down sort of here, if it does sort of work, uh, it's a dog. Uh, obviously, it's a bit tricky sort of. Uh, that's, uh, this is actually not uh, a, um, the, this sort of vaccine sort of here. It's a dog with an oral sort of melanoma. That's sort of the mouth of the dog. And uh, um, I, I just put it there because uh, this actual injection of uh, interleukin-12 uh, in that sort of uh, uh, melanoma sort of there. Let's see if, uh, okay, you've got, uh, if you look now, you see that? That's obviously when the current goes sort of through. It just sort of obviously causes your jaw sort of to contract. And uh, obviously you need to keep your fingers out of the mouth because obviously it will be otherwise be very painful. And uh, that's exactly sort of uh, how the vaccine sort of works. That this is obviously a different uh, altogether, but uh, it's, uh, the concept is exactly the same. You just sort of put it, uh, you've got uh, your sort of handheld, it's got sort of electrodes, uh, and you just sort of obviously put it uh, inside uh, your sort of thigh, and uh, you then pass that sort of current. Uh, and uh, um, the idea is that uh, what you do with, with that, with the current, uh, and it's the same principle. Uh, uh, anybody sort of uh, heard or used even sort of electrochemotherapy? The principle is exactly sort of the same. Obviously, that's sort of electrochemotherapy, so it's uh, the combination of uh, electrical impulses and chemotherapy. What you do is uh, you inject uh, intravenously or intratumor, if you want, sometimes uh, uh, chemotherapy, usually uh, cisplatin or bleomycin. Um, which is a big molecule which uh, has got very big difficulties in getting into cells. Uh, but what you do is uh, you exploit this sort of electroporation phenomenon, which means that uh, whenever you apply these sort of short high voltage pulses, uh, the cells open up pores uh, while you're actually sort of uh, applying the current. Uh, so if you've got drug uh, circling around, uh, they will just penetrate into the cells. Uh, you then sort of uh, stop your pulses, those pores close, and your drug gets sort of trapped into these sort of cells. And because you apply, in the case of the electrochemo, you apply your um, current just to your tumor, then uh, obviously these sort of pores uh, only open up uh, where you apply it. So normal tissue gets sort of spared. Uh, the amount of drug chemotherapy that you use is much lower than uh, the one that you use systemically especially uh, cisplatin, uh, nobody really uses it uh, in veterinary oncology because uh, it's very sort of nephrotoxic. Uh, so you need to diurese your patient before, during and after. So it's just sort of uh, too much to do. Uh, but because you use a much lower dose, uh, you don't need to do that sort of at all. And again, sort of uh, uh, normal cells, everything, normal tissue gets sort of spared. The one that only sort of gets the drug is where you actually apply your current. And uh, the same also principle works uh, on uh, the electro sort of uh, vaccination with this sort of vaccine. And uh, there's a couple of sort of papers and uh, they do use it. This is from University of Turin in Italy. And uh, um, they got some pretty good uh, uh, results sort of using it. Uh, uh, and uh, hopefully they should be able to um, kind of commercialize it uh, and, uh, and get it sort of uh, more readily available sort of. Uh, what they need sort of to do is, uh, and what they do in which uh, the melanoma vaccine doesn't sort of do is uh, they want sort of to test uh, for the expression of this sort of uh, CSPG4 uh, because if it's not expressed uh, high enough uh, then they won't use it and uh, um, they only want to have it if, if, the, if, if the cells express sort of uh, um, this particular sort of marker. Uh, lymphoma sort of vaccine, um, there's, uh, there's a few sort of, uh, uh, but this one is one that uh, um, I've used sort of as well. It's uh, uh, produced by a French sort of company uh, called Eurodelia, and uh, it's uh, an autologous sort of vaccine, uh, which uh, consists of two sort of parts. You've got sort of a ceramic sort of powder and proteins which are purified uh, pro from your patient's sort of tumor called heat shock sort of proteins, SSVs, HPS. These sort of uh, uh, heat shock proteins uh, are produced by normal sort of cells, 
when uh, they're exposed to any type of sort of stress, uh, like sort of heat, cold, ischemia, sort of hypoxia, toxic, UV light, etc. Because what these sort of uh, HSPs sort of do, they sort of protect these sort of cells uh, from possible lethal sort of damage because they bind to certain intracellular sort of proteins that they act as chaperones and they form these sort of complexes. The problem is that tumor cells, they overexpress these heat shock proteins and what they sort of do is, again, these sort of cells have got sort of increased sort of proliferation, survival, migration, and obviously what sort of tumors sort of do. So what they're sort of doing is that you need to, and this is something you do, they send you sort of a kit. So you do everything in-house, you don't need to send anything away. Uh, you need obviously to have a lymph node sort of sample because uh, um, you need to have a bit of tissue. You then sort of extract uh, your own sort of uh, heat shock proteins uh, and you produce the vaccines for yourself. The hydroxyapatite is an adjuvant, so acts as a foreign body and uh, as a carrier sort of uh, for the proteins. Uh, and then when you injected it, uh, it stimulates sort of both uh, innate and acquired uh, immune sort of response. Uh, and uh, there's a couple of papers sort of out now. There's another one which is more recent than this one, uh, uh, where they've got uh, um, this is a good sort of study because it's uh, probably sort of kind of done if one is randomized, placebo controlled, uh, double blinded, chemoimmunotherapy sort of drug. And uh, they've had sort of uh, two groups, one just with uh, chemo and sort of placebo injection. And uh, uh, the other group obviously was chemotherapy and sort of the vaccine. And uh, they've sort of had uh, a very significant sort of uh, difference in uh, um, surviving these sort of dogs uh, between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated sort of dogs. Um, the vaccine sort of, uh, the cost uh, for the kit uh, is about, uh, I think it was 600 uh, euros. Uh, and uh, as I said, you can, you can sort of get it and you do stuff, everything sort of uh, in-house. You don't need to send it sort of away. They've now got also a different sort of protocol compared sort of to this one. Um, you start a bit sort of earlier sort of as well. Last one, uh, osteosarc. This is also very sort of, uh, <coughs> uh, very sort of interesting. Um, there's uh, a lot of uh, common sort of features uh, between human and canine osteosarcomas. Uh, in fact, sort of obviously dogs have been used as models for human sort of osteosarc. Um, first one is the bimodal age presentation. So both in children and young sort of dogs. And then you've got sort of a second uh, phase uh, in older sort of animals or people. Uh, both tumors are uh, very sort of aggressive and histologically sort of uh, uh, different sort of type of tumors. Uh, both of them obviously metastasize really early. Treatment options are uh, very sort of similar between sort of human and uh, canine sort of osteosac. Survival is also sort of not so great because in people you've got about sort of 60-75% uh, uh, survival of five years, which is kind of the mark for human sort of survival if you want, five years. In dogs, uh, we know that sort of dogs, uh, amputation and sort of chemo, you've got about sort of 10-12 uh, um, months minimum survival time. Uh, some dogs will make it sort of two years. Uh, it, obviously, it's a lot more sort of common in dogs compared to people. And you've got this sort of uh, HER2 new, which is an oncogene, which is, uh, again, overexpressed uh, in about sort of 40% uh, in both sort of species. Uh, and again, sort of uh, uh, this is sort of linked to reduced response to neoadjuvant sort of chemo, obviously higher metastatic sort of rate and shorter sort of survival. Like I said, the dog is a very attractive uh, translational sort of model uh, for uh, human sort of osteosarc. And uh, what this sort of company, Aratana, in the States sort of had done is uh, they formulated uh, a modified live, attenuated, uh, recombinant sort of her 2 new <coughs> listeria monocytogenous uh, strain. And what that sort of does, uh, again, sort of uh, enhances both your sort of uh, innate immune sort of system, uh, but also it generates a cancer sort of specific uh, acquired sort of immunity because uh, your sort of listeria, which obviously it's live, but it's attenuated, uh, so you don't get sort of problems for the listeria, obviously expresses uh, your HER2 in your sort of, uh, and that sort of in itself uh, then uh, um, gets your immune system going. 
um, this sort of uh, very sort of recent sort of uh, paper um, where they've obviously got uh, um, it's a phase sort of one sort of trial 18 dogs uh, uh, without metastasis five dogs already had the pulmonary metastasis uh, and uh, that's sort of uh, the timeline sort of there obviously diagnosis amputation they've done sort of uh, a conventional sort of chemo with carboplatin uh, every three weeks uh, times sort of four and then they did sort of a uh, three sort of vaccinations are given three weeks sort of apart and then obviously restaging afterwards uh, and you can see sort of their medium survival time uh, almost a thousand days for dogs without metastasis but 738 for dogs with metastasis sort of included one with metastasis uh, and obviously that sort of uh, worked out with a 78 percent uh, one year survival 67 percent uh, two year survival 56 percent uh, three year survival so you can see the big difference between uh, your kind of sort of normal sort of classic uh, uh, figures that we normally sort of give out and, and these sort of figures sort of here. Uh, this vaccine is not out yet. Um, it's just got sort of a, a conditional sort of license uh, and it's just used by uh, a certain number of oncolo veterinary oncologists uh, in, uh, in the States. Uh, uh, they're just doing obviously bigger sort of trials before it can actually sort of come out uh, uh, more sort of in the market uh, and there's also a human sort of company that is doing sort of uh, similar sort of trials uh, uh, in people sort of as well uh, so hopefully this should come out uh, if uh, obviously things sort of go according to plan should sort of come out uh, uh, in the near sort of future um, the obviously melanoma sort of vaccine the Merial is out uh, um, the it, Italian sort of one hopefully should come out sort of as well. The lymphoma vaccine is still is already out. It's been out sort of for quite a few sort of years sort of as well. So, uh, and there are sort of uh, lots of other sort of vaccines. Obviously, immunotherapy it's a massive uh, market uh, in the human sort of oncology, uh, and also it's a big sort of market sort of uh, in veterinary sort of oncology as well. So there's lots of other um, treatments sort of uh, being developed by different sort of companies uh, that hopefully should come out. Uh, in the near sort of future and obviously these are all uh, because it's immunotherapy so it's something that you can always combine with uh, conventional sort of uh, therapy sort of as well it's not something that you just use uh, on its own and with that uh, thank you very much for coming <laughs> <laughs>